In this tutorial, we will create React app from scratch and declare a few routes using React Router. First, we will deploy React app to S3 using AWS console and enable website hosting. We will also set up a custom domain to point to the S3 bucket. This approach won't allow us to secure our website with HTTPS. To use TLS, we would need to deploy our app to CloudFront. In addition to the standard features of CDN, it can automatically compress files from the S3 using zip and broadly to improve performance and reduce the cost of the the hosting in general. If you host your domain outside of AWS, you'll only be able to set up a custom subdomain. For example, instead of devopsbyexample.io, you can only use www.devopsbyexample.io. If you want to use root domain, I'll show you how to transfer your domain to the route 53 and set up an alias for the cloud front distribution. Finally, we will create CI/CD pipeline using GitHub Actions to test and deploy our app to S3 and CloudFront. We will create a dedicated IAM user with permissions to upload files and invalidate cache in CloudFront. You can find the source code and all the commands that are run in the video on my website. New Node.js versions come with the NPX package manager that helps you to install dependencies and run commands even if you haven't installed that module yet. Let's generate React app. To run it, you need to switch to the React folder and run npm start command. It should open a browser with a default React page. Next, we need to install React router using npm install command. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code as my editor. To open your project, run code and then specify the current directory. We need to create two routes for our application. Let's call them expenses and invoices and place them under source routes folder. This example is straight from the React Router tutorial. Create routes folder first and then JavaScript file expenses.js. It's just going to be h2 tag with padding. Nothing special, just to validate routing. Let's call the second file invoices.js. The content of this file is very similar, just a different title, invoices. Now let's update app.js to include links. First of all, remove the logo. We're not going to use it anymore. Then import the link component from React Router DOM. Also replace the main div with h1 tag and our links to invoices and expenses. Next, we need to update the entry point to our React app index.js. We need to import routes and additional React Router components and wrap everything in browser router. Let's quickly verify that React app works and we can navigate to those links that we created. Run npm start again. Expenses link works as well as invoices. Now we need to deploy it to the S3 bucket. First of all, let's create S3 bucket. When you choose a name for the bucket, you want to match it with a custom domain that you want to use. In my case, it's www.devopsbyexample.io. Right now, I use Google domains to host my domain. That's why I can only use the subdomain domain www. In case I would want root domain devops by example .io, I would need to transfer it to the route 53. We're going to do it later. Give it a name www devops by example .io and choose the region. I'll keep US East 1. To host the website in the S3 bucket, you also must disable block all public access. On the other hand, you can keep it on if you want to host it only via CloudFront. We will discuss differences later. You can keep other default parameters. Scroll all the way down and click create a bucket. The next step is to build and upload the static files to this bucket. Go to react project and run build command. It will create an optimized production build. We will need to upload the content of this directory to the bucket. For now, let's do it manually. Later, we will automate it with AWS CLI. Select the bucket and click upload. You can drag and drop files or again click add files. Select files under the build folder and click upload. Next, we need to upload the folder. Select the static folder and click upload as well. All right, now we have uploaded our React app to the S3 bucket. To host a website from the S3 bucket, you need to click properties and enable static website hosting. Under index document, type index.html. The last change that we need to make before we can access the website is to allow read access to anyone. Go to the permissions tab and update the bucket policy. Replace devotes by example.io with your bucket name. 
If you go to the bucket endpoint right now, it should return your home page. You can find it under the properties tab. You can notice already that it will work only with plain HTTP and not HTTPS. The website loads and all the links work as expected. Most likely, you would want to add your custom domain to your website. It's relatively easy to do for subdomains if you host your domain outside of AWS. Only www or other subdomains will work. A C name cannot be placed at the root domain level because the root domain is a DNS start of authority, which must point to the IP address. Go to your domain hosting provider and create a C name record point to the S3 bucket endpoint. C name must match the bucket name. Under host name, enter www. Switch type to C name. You can optionally reduce the time to live parameter. I do it just for the demo. Otherwise, I keep it as is. For the C name value, enter your S3 bucket endpoint and click save. Usually, it takes a few minutes to update the DNS. Wait a minute or so and try to use your domain to access the website. Use HTTP. HTTPS is only supported for CloudFront. It still works. It's a good sign. It's time to deploy to AWS CloudFront. I'll show you two approaches. One is to keep public access to all files in the S3 bucket and use its endpoint as a region. In my experience, this approach works better with custom routing if you have many different URLs and custom redirects. For the second approach, we will use origin access identities to allow only CloudFront to access S3 objects and use a bucket as a region. Go to CloudFront and create a new distribution. For the origin, paste the bucket endpoint URL. Keep compress objects automatically to improve performance and reduce the cost of the hosting. Select redirect HTTP to HTTPS for viewer protocol policy. It's a standard approach. Unless you have a special requirement, stick with it. Add the custom domain names that you use in URLs. For example, you can add www.devopsbyexample.io and devopsbyexample.io. If you want to use HTTPS, you need to request a certificate. We need a public certificate. Add the same domain names for the certificate request. You need to manually create CNAME records to pass verification process. The first one is for www subdomain. Copy CNAME and use it in the domain hosting provider. For the volume, you need to copy paste this string. Let's do the same thing for the root domain. Copy the name. And the value. Wait till the certificate is valid and select it under Custom SSL Certificate. It should not take a long time, usually up to 5 minutes. Alright, it's issued. Go back to the CloudFront distribution, refresh and select it. For the default root object, enter index.html. Keep the rest and click Create Distribution. When the deployment is completed, you can access the distribution domain name to get your website. Don't forget that we need to update DNS to point to the CloudFront distribution. A quick check with dig to get currency name and IP. It returns the bucket endpoint. Copy distribution name and replace the bucket URL in the Google domains. Go back to the terminal in a couple of minutes and check the domain. Now it should point to the CloudFront distribution. You can use HTTPS instead of HTTP. Website and all links work. Also, you can open Inspect panel in the Chrome to check if it uses compression to optimize performance. Select one of CSS, JavaScript or HTML files. 
under the headers you should see either zip or broadly encoding type. That means compression is working. Same thing with JavaScript files. If you want to use the root domain for your website, you would need to transfer your domain to the route 53 and set up an alias. You need to create a route 53 public hosted zone for your domain. It should match your domain name. In my case, devopsbyexample.io. Then you need to update DNS name servers for your domain. Most of the hosting providers allow you to use custom name servers. Find the way to update them and use name servers presented in your Route 53 hosted zone. In Google domains, you can navigate to custom name servers and update values there. Let's replace all four default Google name servers. Now the second one. And finally, the last one. If you're using Google domains, you also need to switch to these settings, otherwise they will be ignored. This procedure may easily take few hours to complete. You can use the D command to validate name servers. Don't proceed until you see correct values under NS records. The main points to the Google's name servers. Rerun this command in a few hours. Now you have name servers that belong to AWS. This means we can create all the DNS records from now on in the Route 53 hosted zone. Now we need to create DNS records for both www and root domain in the Route 53. Use LSS in both cases. If you use CNAME, this introduces a performance penalty since at least one additional DNS lookup must be performed to resolve the target. Paste the distribution name for your CloudFront deployment. The same thing for the root domain. We can only use an LS since CloudFront distribution provides only a domain name and not the IP address. Let's check the website. First, use www. It works. Now, in a new window, use root domain. It works as well. It's time to automate the deployment process. We will use GitHub Actions to install dependencies, run some unit tests, upload files to S3, and invalidate the cache. Let's create an empty private GitHub repository and call it devopsbyexample.io. You can use this command to connect to the existing repo. Add the remote origin for the React project. To create a GitHub Actions workflow, you need to follow the same folder structure. First, create that GitHub directory. Then, workflows. I have another GitHub Actions tutorials if you want to learn more. Then, the file containing the workflow. Give it a name, for example, build and deploy. It will show up in the GitHub Actions UI. Then you can choose when you want to run this workflow. You can run it on a change in a particular branch, for example, master. Or you can run it on pull request to perform some testing. Then you can have multiple jobs that will run in parallel by default, but you can define dependencies. For example, build and deploy should only run after the test job. In this workflow, we will have a single job. Give it a name. Then you can choose where you want to run it. You can run it on GitHub runners or you can choose to host your own runners, which is free from the GitHub perspective. You would only need to pay for the infrastructure. Declare a few environment variables. First is a bucket name, then the build directory, the region of the S3 bucket, and a CloudFront distribution. We will use it to invalidate the cache. Each job consists of steps executed sequentially. The first one is to clone the GitHub repository to the runner. Then you need to install AWS CLI and configure credentials. You can use open source GitHub Actions to help with that or you can create your own script. Those secrets we will create in a few minutes. Ubuntu comes with a default version of the Node.js. If you need a specific version, you can use setup node action and specify the version. The next step is to install dependencies, specifically the React router. Then build the site. Copy files to the S3 bucket using AWS CLI. And finally, invalidate the cache. CloudFront provides you with a limited free number of invalidations. You should check the current count. For my personal usage, it's more than enough. To grant access for the GitHub Actions to upload files to S3, we need to create IAM user and grant appropriate permissions. Let's create the S3 web access IAM policy. The first statement allows list objects in the bucket, then all kinds of actions, including delete, create, etc. And the last one to invalidate the cache in CloudFront. Don't forget to replace it with your bucket name.
Give the name S3 Web Access. Then let's create a GitHub Actions user and attach the S3 Web Access policy. The username is GitHub Actions and enable only programmatic access. Usually, you would create IAM group and attach policies to the group. For this demo, let's attach it directly to the user. You can filter by customer managed. Go to GitHub repo and create a couple of secrets. You can find it under Settings and Actions. The first one is AWS Access Key ID. And the second one is AWS Secret Access Key. To test our CI-CD pipeline, let's make a change and push it to the remote. Now let's add all the changes. Commit with a message and push it to the origin master. In a repo, you can see a yellow dot that indicates that GitHub Actions workflow is running. You can find it under the Actions tab. Let's wait till it finishes. For the final test, go to your website. V2 is in place. GitHub Actions built, uploaded new version to the S3 bucket, and it validated cache. Optionally, in case you want to restrict direct access for individual S3 objects in your bucket, you can block public access and grant access only to CloudFront. Go to your bucket and disable static website hosting. Under the Permission tab, enable Block Public Access and remove Bucket Policy. To check if the website works, we need to invalidate the cache. Alright, 404 not found is expected. Finally, go to CloudFront and update the region to point to the S3 bucket. You can see right now it's custom origin. Select your bucket. Then you need to configure access from CloudFront to the S3 bucket. Create a new access identity and click Yes, update the bucket policy. After you save the changes, you should be able to access the app. It works as before, but now no one will be able to access individual files in your bucket only via CloudFront. This is one of the way of deploying static websites. Another way is to use GitHub pages, which is much easier to manage and it's free for public repositories. I have another tutorial explaining how to deploy to GitHub pages and also set up a custom domain. You can watch it here.